Hello minions, Wheezy here. Uh, today I'm gonna try something um, that I'd like to do more going forward. I'm gonna watch. Oh, I need to do this full screen. I'm gonna watch uh, back a gameplay that I recorded um, and talk through kind of what was going on during the game and try and give you guys tips and uh, strategies about how we're gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna basically just watch the whole thing and talk during it, but during the parts that are kind of inter uninteresting, I'll cut those up in post. So it should be hopefully short and succinct and uh, take a 20 plus minute gameplay and turn it into something short and something you can get a lot of value from. Um, what we're covering today is I was queuing up for Warzone trios with uh, as solo by myself, and I got teamed up with two randoms and by two randoms, I mean, I think they have the same, I think they have the same clan tag, meaning that they were they were queuing up together, um, and I'm assuming that they were in their own party, um, because I couldn't hear their chat. Sometimes when I'm queuing up with randoms, I'll be able to hear their chat and uh, talk to them. And this wasn't the case, so I want to talk you through this gameplay about um, a Warzone win that I got with two randoms that I wasn't able to talk to. <laughs> Uh, and there's something, there's a lot of value to be gained here, um, and it wasn't just because they carried me or I carried them. They were they were good, and, and if they weren't good, I've gotten in games with a couple randoms before, and uh, it doesn't go well. Like that happens probably more often than than you'll get. Uh, I've had some decent randoms and some loses and some shitty randoms, and uh, and some really bad loses. So loses losses. I think loses is better <laughs> when you're talking about randoms. Um, but in this game, and this is a little spoiler, right, but I want you to stick around until the end, is we win and we can't talk to each other. I don't know, sometimes when you're when you're in a private party chat, you can still hear the game party chat coming through. So there's a point in the gulag that I'll talk you through where I got into chat and was talking just in case they could hear me. Um, but I'm not entirely certain they could hear me at all. We, I didn't try to talk to them during the game. I just assumed they couldn't hear me because I couldn't hear them. Um, so we'll walk through it and uh, and just kind of see see how this turns out. See if it's not too much rambling. Um, so it starts out. This happens to me a lot. I don't know if it's random or what, but I tend to I tend to get more often than not. The game tends to tag me as squad leader. I don't know why that is. When I'm playing with randoms and I can tell that they're partied up, like these two, um, I like to hand over control and have them pick the jump because they're talking to each other. So the first thing that I did was, hey, I don't want to be squad leader. You guys you guys are obviously talking to each other. Um, can you see on there? Yeah. So they both have the Bush the Bush clan tag. I can guess their approximate age based on their clan tag. <laughs> they're probably younger, poor college students in their, you know, maybe like 2021, 20, something like that, you know, playing in their dorm room. Anyway, I don't want to pass judgment. Um, so let them let them pick the chop zone. They immediately choose a contract to uh, to go and you know a bounty contract. So already I know these guys are a little bit more aggressive than your average boo boo bear in Warzone. Uh, so I'm still kind of looting, and they're already kind of pushing a little bit towards this contract. So um, I don't you know I'm. I obviously want to make sure that I've got a gun before I go and try and kill someone. I think they're pushing fast at the beginning because they're going to try and find someone who doesn't have a very good gun. Um, walking you kind of through some of my assumptions but but moving in here I see already the two of them kind of point in the same direction toward this so they're most like this this indicates to me that they're communicating right he's covering this side the other guy's going in the other side they're moving slowly and quietly they're trying to sneak up on him so I'm trying not to bust that by come sprinting around um, although he's got an RPG on his shoulder <laughs> so I'm trying to kind of follow their lead here and be quiet and obviously I know that we're doing this bounty contract then I hear movement uh, upstairs and so I try to give him a ping here I can hear the bad guys upstairs can't really talk to him and tell him that my hair's getting in my way today corona haircut um, and this is a little early for us to be kind of pushing like this these guys have RPGs there you know thought it was thought it was a good time to push I wasn't able to finish that guy off we caused a lot of ruckus I don't know if this is one team or two teams I'm shooting that guy there's a guy upstairs teammates down one's dead and I'm trying to engage this guy to go to jump over the bar. Another guy comes in. <laughs> right? So I think this just ruckus just pulled in two squads. I mean, because that other guy, two guys came in through the door. There was one guy I was shooting outside. I'm assuming that was two squads. Um, so that did not go well. This right out of the gate made me think, okay, 
<laughs> Maybe this isn't going to go so well. Um, I'm just screwing up. Those of you who've seen the tips in the Reddit, you know, or stuff like that, about trying to spray paint people so they're easier to see in the gulag, I do it just because it's funny. It doesn't help at all, right? Having a bright bullseye on someone in the gulag makes no fucking difference. Like, they don't stand out anymore, but I love spray painting people. What the hell else am I going to do? Notice my teammates down there. I hop on the comms. You can hear me. Trying to call out the position. Right side, back side. I don't know if he can hear me or not. He seemed to kind of respond like he could. Um, he seemed to, when I was talking, to be able to identify where the guy was in the gulag. So, um, so he gets the win, and then it's my turn. I'm going to do a separate video with gulag strategies. This is my go-to gulag strategy. Run to the middle, hold still. Listen for, for footsteps if you don't hear any. Get your tack grenade out. See if you hit someone. This one was a little more intense than usual, and I was pushing. Um, luckily, I got him. But uh, I'll do a full video on that. Ever since I started doing this strategy in Gulag, I win like 9 out of 10 Gulags. Right? Like, it's... I'll go... Teaser. I'll go over that in another video. So I'm jumping in. Flaming Panda's here. So I'm just going to jump on him. I don't know what the plan is. Um, other than, you know... They've obviously already grabbed a scavenger contract. I just got out of the gulag. I need a gun. I know the scavenger crate has one in it. I might have pissed him off here by dropping on this and taking the gun because he also came out of the gulag. So he probably also doesn't have a gun, which means I just robbed him. But he's a random, and they just got us killed. So I think I'm probably better trusted with the gun at this point. So we're going to run up to the next one. Um, I don't think anything really interesting happens here. So I'm going to stop rambling, and let's catch up when something happens. So... Um, so one good thing about this and one thing that's smart right is you can see down there so we have one of the teammates that didn't didn't win in the gulag um, completing a contract like this a gives us equipment which is good we need it we just got out of the gulag we don't have guns and it gives us cash so that we can hopefully have enough cash to buy back our other squad mate so I'm already starting to pick up these guys have a little bit of an idea what they're doing they you know and that first fight Turned into a bit of a cluster. I'm trying not to hold it against him. So I see here that uh, between the two of us, we have enough to buy back our teammate. I forget that it's down instead of up to drop stuff. So I just toss him all my cash. Um, and luckily, there's a buy station right next to where we finish this contract. And I did regret that I dumped him all of my money instead of just the amount of money he needed to buy back our squad mate because I now don't have enough money to buy plates. I had enough... <laughs> If I had just dropped him a hundred bucks or whatever, a little bit of money, he'd have been able to buy that guy back. And now I have no plates. <laughs> so, lesson learned. That's why I was looking at the buy station like, oh shit, where's my... I should, I should have left myself some money so I could buy some plates. If you're playing with a random and he throws you all his money and you notice that you have enough for, to drop him some money to buy some plates, drop some money back. Just saying. <laughs> all right, let's see what else happens here. Just looting. I found a plate. Yes. There's kind of we're doing a recon contract, but I can tell they're kind of not moving towards it. Um, really. So I'm like, I'm trying to follow their lead still a little bit, see what they're doing. I kind of move towards that contract, like, hey, are we gonna go and actually do this? And I can tell from them not following me that that's not really the plan. So rather than run off on my own, I'll stick with them. That riot shield was tempting. I considered grabbing it just to fuck around. But I like having an assault rifle that's good for general engagements. And then something specialized. Either a sniper for long range or something specialized for close range. So I like to... The riot shield felt like it would have been a wasted weapon. Maybe if I had a... Maybe if I already had like my kit assault rifle, I'd have gone for it. <laughs> just to see. Because not getting shot in the back is valuable. That happens in multiplayer all the time. Riot shields are fucking irritating. Or maybe they thought to call out the riot shield because they thought maybe I was useless and that I would be better as a bullet sponge. I don't know. The good news is we did it. We did end up coming to this contract. These guys know what's going on. The recon contract. Those of you that don't know, when you secure the position, it shows you the next circle. So this gives us an advantage on knowing where the circle is going to close to, so we can go ahead and get a better position there. Didn't really occur to me at the time. It's occurring to me right now. Um, I mean, I knew that, 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 that it does this, but I think that was part of these, their strategy because we did 
end up kind of picking the final circle really early on. So I was going back and watching this game earlier after it happened. I realized, um, and actually I think it's right here. This basically, we right now we end up running into the final circle, essentially. Kind of lucky, really. I mean, we couldn't have known that. We didn't get like three contracts. We didn't know like three, four circles ahead, but... And I'm relatively certain they didn't buy this loadout drop, so it, the game was being a little nice to us right here. My Warzone kit for this day was an RPG and the Growl unsuppressed. Um, I swapped out the RPG for that sniper rifle I had because it feels like we're getting to the point in the game where there's not as much vehicles. And also, I don't feel like the vehicle meta is as big a thing and the RPGs aren't... RPGs became such a big part of the meta for Warzone um, that people started running EOD a lot, and so C4. C4 and RPGs made people run EOD. It's what I run now for my perk one. And because of that, it's, the, it's starting to eliminate itself from the meta. So my kit has an RPG in it just because that's better than a pistol, and I don't want to use overkill because I want to run Ghost. Um, but yeah, so I decided to swap that out for a sniper rifle. That Dragonov is trash right which we'll find out that wasn't the final circle um because i forgot we have this part where we shoot at people from the dam um dragging off is trash but you'll see later on i, I pick up something better <laughs> running time it's a running time gonna run away during run time we're obviously going to get this contract which i can tell they've got it called out and we're running directly at it uh, at this point, I'm just kind of wondering what their next thought is. We're still, you know, we got our work, we got our loadout drops now. So I guess they're thinking, hunt. And hey, I've got a sniper rifle. It's shitty, <laughs> but I got one. And they're calling guys out, so I guess we're going to take some shots and see what happens. Look at, look at this. Look at the drop on this trash. Ugh, so much drop. Dragon off is garbage. Such garbage, especially with that optic from that range. It was it was a box pickup. It's not part of my loadout. Don't don't hold me responsible. I would have put the HDR in there. I have since reworked my loadouts. I now have two Warzone loadouts. One has overkill and a sniper rifle, and the other one has a ghost and the RPG. I figured might as well check and see if there's any decent loot here because this dragon off is trash. <laughs> We're obviously still trying to push down to to get this bounty complete. Which makes sense, we're armed up, we've got our loadout drops. Personally, I wouldn't necessarily, especially with a random, if I'm these two, right, and I'm playing with a random, I'm not entirely certain I'd be this aggressive pushing the squad. Now this guy, because of his scope, I know he's probably got a decent sniper, like an HDR and AX50. So I'm not trying to spend much time exposed, because if he gets a shot on me, he's going to break my plates and I don't have many. So I don't want to fuck with that sniper too much other than trying to take some shots at him to keep him down. Um, I'm basically just trying to harass them with the dragon off right now because I know it's not going to kill anything. That's why I've got 36 shots and I'm not bothering to shoot too much. I see these guys engaging with something, doing call outs. Um, I'm trying to figure out because we're not talking. I'm trying to figure out just from their tags where things are happening. I'm trying to see if I can get a, a line of sight with this sniper rifle to help support them. But I realize they're pushing up on this building. That dragon off is trash. I have a growl. I'd probably be better off up close supporting them. So I move up to try and get close. And if they're going to get in a shootout against another squad, I want it to be three on three, not three on two with some asshole sitting on a hill with a dragon off. So down to one. See the teammates reviving his buddy there. So I'm trying to cover them. They call a cluster. Time to move. Move laterally. I saw that guy pointed it right at me, so I know I need to move. I'm trying to use cover here. I know that our contract down that hill behind me, so I'm a little... It's, it's a little sketchy here, but cover against the people that I know are there is better than cover against people who may or may not be behind me. Although I believe I do check, yeah. I'm a little, I'm a little weary, so I don't, I don't want to be super exposed. So at this point, I'm not really sure what's happened to the people in this building. The fighting has kind of stopped. I checked my heartbeat sensor. There's still a guy in there. That's right. 
I'm going through it. Like, it's like the same thought process during the game. I'm like, are there still people in there? Boop. Yeah. I don't know what these guys are trying to do. I see they're moving up on the building. I know that I have some C4 now, so I figure maybe I'll try and help out with that. I don't know if I damaged a piece of equipment. <laughs> I think that's probably what that was. Looks like there's just one in there. So I'm trying to help support. But at the same time, a stairwell is a death trap. He goes up there, he starts getting lit up. He's smart. He's like, nope, fuck this. And I can hear him plating up next to me. He's like, okay. So going up the stairs, probably not the best thing. Luckily, I spot this guy. So we've drawn attention. Um, a lot of shooting. Plus, my weapon's unsuppressed. I've updated my growl kit to have a suppressor. It just, it just, we just kind of need one. I don't like being a, I don't like being a dinner bell in Warzone. So now there's a guy upstairs and a guy over there. So we're not in the best position in the world. <laughs> it's a, it's a two-way firefight. There. I just don't have any more equipment. I was thinking I'll throw more C4 up there. I don't have any. see one teammate in this house to my right the other one's moving around kind of taking a flaking route i'm out in the open so i figure i probably ought to try and get into a building get some cover maybe i can engage someone from a better position taking the high ground i'm gonna get over here and check this window where the guy's upstairs see if maybe he'll make a mistake and peek up so i can shoot him all right where are we Basically trying to figure out where the baddies are. Airstrikes getting called in. Still no communication with my team. They're probably seeing what's going on. I still don't know. I, I can't even really, I don't even know if I saw in the kill feed yet, if they've cleared out that building yet. I see them again kind of moving in on it. And my heartbeat sensor says the building's empty. So at this point, I don't really know. I think going back and watching the replay, I think, I think my teammates did actually kill the guy inside. Um, I didn't notice that in the moment, and so at this point I'm wondering if the guy ran away or got killed, so. I don't necessarily know if I want to engage these guys with his shitty dragon off from this range, because I know I'm not really going to kill him, I'm just going to let them know we're there. I tag them for my teammates to see if they have an idea of what they want to do. <laughs> but I chose not to fire. I think they're still not sure if there was a guy up here. <laughs> There's not. So yeah, that guy, again, he's got a decent scope, so I'm trying to keep him kind of suppressed so he can't get a good steady shot on me, but once he hits me, I'm like, alright, your rifle's probably better than mine. This late in the game, people with their loadouts, they probably have their HDRs and their AX-50s. Moving with my teammates. Don't know what they're doing over here, but hey, look, some loot. Bouncing Bettys. Leave one there in case someone shows up. And then I see them bailed out of this building too. So they must have been checking for the guy that they killed over here to see if there was any decent loot. And then I see movement just randomly. That must have been... Was that the guy that was upstairs maybe? I don't know. Maybe that was the guy that was up there. He was just like laying out in the shrubs. Anyway, he twitched, so I shot him, and it worked out. <laughs> so now I'm going to check him for gear. He's got an armor satchel. He's also got a, what, a cluster strike. Yeah. Kind of briefly look at his weapons and hear my teammates engaging, so I'm not really... I was, like, looking for the buy station. Give me them plates. I got some money now, brah. I'm going to plate back up. Having plates when you're getting late in the game, any time in the game, honestly. Anytime you can get plates, get plates. If you don't have plates, get plates. So now, I'm like, we killed this guy. He had his own custom loadout. Now I've got an AX-50. That's part of the reason why I run. Go I still run Ghost, and I and I don't run Overkill. Ghost, theoretically, I hear there's bugs, whether or not it keeps you off the heartbeat sensors all the time. Um, Ghost theoretically keeps you off the heartbeat sensors, keeps you off the UAVs, especially in late circles. Um, that's valuable. Those of you who don't know, thermal scopes have a bug that you can't see through unbroken windows with them. So rather than breaking that window out, I decide to go look for a window that's already broken so I can actually see through it. Um, 
The reason I don't run overkill still, I still prefer ghost, is because to win a game, you're going to have to kill some people, right? Once you get your loadout, or at some point in the game when you encounter someone, they'll probably have their loadout. They will almost certainly have a nice sniper rifle. So when it comes to secondary weapons, that guy came right up the stairs and my teammate just handled it. Um, I, I kind of count on the fact that I want my primary assault rifle and I want ghost and I'll pick up the other thing that I need off of someone. If someone has a good SMG, or I'm looking for an HDR. I don't know why all these people were carrying AX-50s. AX-50s have more bullet drop than the HDR, so I, I prefer the, the, the HDR to the AX-50, especially at long range. Personal preference, I guess, but... There's a lot of shooting. I don't know where the bad guys are. I'm looking. I don't know what they're shooting at. This is, if the enemy's shooting back, it shows you the value of suppressors. I don't even know. I hear footsteps outside and I managed to get this guy. I don't know if you could hear it over the chat. He's like, but he was pissed that he got shot. Shit. So, that's who my teammates were shooting at. I heard footsteps outside and that's the only reason I got him. If you're playing, if you're playing Call of Duty without a decent pair of headphones, you're, you, there's a reason you're getting killed a lot and it's because people hear your footsteps. It's part, it's part of the game now, unfortunately. Get the gas mask. I'm still looking for an HDR. Is that? I think there's another AX50 there. Yeah. Wait, what the? All right, guys. Bouncing Betty. I can tell that we're kind of getting to the point where we're hanging out in this building, so that Bouncing Betty goes down to kind of protect us from people rushing. Gas is closing in. Relocating the safe zone. This thermal scoped AX50. Although with all this bullet drop at long range. That wasn't, that was, you know, that was like a center mass shot anyway. This guy is trying to get a shot on me. He probably has a sniper rifle. So I'm trying to keep him suppressed so he doesn't get a chance to get a good line on me. With this scope, I know I've got a scope glint so they can see right where I am. I, I go back and forth on the HDR build between the 3.5 scope and the magnified scope because the 3.5 doesn't have a scope glint which can be a big advantage but you won't really be able to engage at this distance with that and at the point when you're sniping at people I mean yeah you don't want to necessarily give them a glowing beacon where you're at but at the same time they're gonna know roughly where you're at I don't know I go back and forth on it getting some enemy tags from there I decided to drop that cluster strike over there just to just to see. I don't find that the kill streaks are super effective in general um, because when you call them out, the enemies tend to bug out anyway. So I tend to use them more as a deterrent or to try and manipulate what people are doing, make them hide or take cover. I don't necessarily expect it to get a kill. I'm not a great sniper. <laughs> But as it turns out, I end up doing most of my work in this game with a sniper rifle. Ah, damn. I love that you get to hear people's audio for a second after you kill them. <laughs> <clears throat> that guy was all by himself against a squad of two other people, and it looks like he took him out. And then I sniped him. He's got to be pissed. Sorry. Teammates rushing. That guy must have been weak or something. There's kill feed, two kills, one with the AR, one with the MP5, so. I I didn't feel like dead weight in this match, but these guys definitely, them communicating with each other gave them an advantage. They were a lot more effective than I was without communication, so. This is not a preferred way to try and get a win. I'm just trying to support them. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the deaf mute <laughs> trying to help out the, the soldiers. Right now I'm looking for people on the edge of the gas trying to move up towards us. We've got high ground here, essentially the top of the house. There is high ground above us up the actual hill. Um, and then I see movement. Call it out. The tagging system is really important. Calling out things to your teammates, especially when you don't have comms. It's important all the time, but especially when you don't have comms. Got that kill. And then I got hit. I don't know where that shot came from, but it's time to plate up. <laughs> Armor satchels are a good addition. Being able to carry eight plates instead of five is, uh, is good. 
Although it is kind of a feature that makes the rich richer and the poor poorer, I think. People that are already good at the game now have even more armor. I think it's a good addition overall, but if you're if you're already struggling in Warzone, it's not going to make it better for you. <laughs> the circle's closing in. I'm looking for people coming in. Our squad mate has decided that he's going to keep us spread out by covering from the top floor of that other building, which I think is a good tactic. It gives us you know, less of a chance of being overwhelmed by a single RPG. We see, you look up at the top there, two teams, six people left. So this is the last squad. It's the three of us versus the three of them. And they've got the high ground, but they're being forced down the hill, which is lucky for us. They have to come to us, and it's basically a fucking shooting gallery. So there's a fun moment here. I'm looking for this guy behind the hill. They're doing a draw, and then the RPG. Fucking like a movie, right down the scope. They go to make run for it. And then I, th I think we'd killed we killed the other one. And then they finish her off. I think this is I think this is Yahtzee. <laughs> I was waiting to see if she was going to come around that building. And uh, I think Blue went out there and rushed her. Or did he get her with an airstrike? Did we win on an airstrike right after I was saying that those kill streaks don't really kill people? Embarrassing. But for those of you who've seen my other videos of Warzone victories, where they didn't allow me to be in the helicopter. Spoiler alert, I got to be in the helicopter this time. So that was good. So yeah, um, played with a couple of randoms. This was like my second or third, I don't even remember it. I wasn't playing much this day and I ended up with a decent team and, uh, and we got a victory. Look at that, didn't even say two words. I think at the end of that I said good shit fellas or something to that effect, but we, uh, didn't really tap, and we won. Look at that. So let's see the let's see the final stats here. <clears throat> so I got six kills. Panda got five, eight for Bamf. Damage, damage, damage. It was a good game. It was balanced. Like we were a good, solid team. Um, it. Uh, I think that's the end of the video where I captured. Oh, I, I don't know if I ended up capturing that at the end but I kind of went to see I always argue with myself should I send them like a friend request or something like that but at the same time I'm kind of like I get the feeling from their clan tag that I probably wouldn't like these guys <laughs> so it was a good game but I kind of let them go um, I think that's I think that's where I stopped it so uh, yeah um, I hope that was useful I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into how uh, to do effectively in Warzone with uh, some randoms just to kind of hit some quick high points um, Especially if you're, the randoms that you're playing with are, are playing together, are a squad. Um, let them take the lead and just try and do your best to support them. Um, maybe sometime I'll post differently if I manage to get a win with randoms when I kind of take control. If the randoms aren't really organized and you know what you're doing, um, it can be good for you to take control. If, if someone in the group naturally gravitates toward taking control, let them take the lead. If you're working with randoms, you know, follow the strongest part of the group and try to just support what they're doing. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think, and uh, I'll talk to you later.